Turn with me this morning to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1, and we'll start in verse 8 this morning. Uh, the title of this message today is going to be called Born for a Purpose. Hallelujah. Born for a Purpose. Every child of God, yes. every person in this world is born for a person. Believer or, or unbeliever. That's right. Born for a purpose. The trouble and the problem with most people in the world is they have never found their purpose. That's right. <clears throat> they never figure out what God has called them to do. And therefore, if they don't ever find their purpose, the divine will of God, they will wander in the wilderness like the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt and wandered in the wilderness for 40 plus years. 40 years of wandering, going around and around and around the mountain, mm -hmm. around the desert, for 40 years in circles. And that's the problem with a lot of people today is they never find their purpose. Yes. I've counseled drug addicts, mm -hmm. alcoholics, yes. people of all sorts, married couples, and I always try to help them find their purpose. Because yes, a drug addict just ain't never found his purpose yet. That's right. Preach it, Pastor. Someone that's wondering aimlessly in this world just they never found their purpose but when they find that purpose mm -hmm. then they can come out of the wilderness yes. That's right. and they can go into the promised land yes. Yes. Hallelujah. they can go into the blessings of God yes. once they find their purpose yes. I'm so glad I finally found my purpose because yes. I was a wanderer for 27 years I didn't know what God had in store for me, but that wasn't God's problem. That was my fault. Yes. From the day I was born and from the day you were born, you were born for a purpose. That's right. Amen. But some of us don't ever seek God mm -hmm. for our purpose mm -hmm. and what he's called us to do. You know, if you're inside the will of God and you understand your purpose, you can live in a bamboo hut in the middle of the jungle of Vietnam and be happy. That's right. Amen. But if you don't know your purpose, yes. you can live on a mansion on the hilltop and drive a Cadillac <laughs> and be the saddest person on the planet. Yes. You got tile floors, a blessed roof over your head, blessed job, all the money in the bank you could ever want. But why are you the saddest person in the world? Because you don't understand your purpose. That's right. Amen. You were born to be more than a plumber. That's right. And a businessman. That's right. And a contractor. Yes. You were born to be more than a hairdresser. Yes. God has a divine purpose for you. That's right. Amen. It's called a destiny. Yes. Hallelujah. A destiny. Man, when you find your purpose, mm -hmm. you find the meaning of life. Yes, amen. So this morning, let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. I have some scriptures here I want to give you. Follow along with me in your Bibles, please. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. The Apostle Paul is speaking here to his spiritual son, Timothy. And he said in verse 8, Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God. Verse 9. Let's zoom in on that one. Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling. Right, not according to our works. That's very important right there. Yes. Not according to our works as he called us and saved us. But according to his own purpose. Everybody say purpose. Purpose. He called us according to his own purpose. That's right. And grace 
which was given to us in Christ Jesus, listen to this, before time began. That's hard to figure out. How God had a purpose and a plan for you before time ever started. Amen. Amen. Don't think God don't know something about you. That's right. <laughs> and everything about you. That's right. Yes. He knows everything. Yes, Lord. And he has a purpose, a plan, and a destiny for each one of you in here today. Yes. But the apostle Paul said, We were saved and called with a holy calling, not according to our works. Here's what you need to understand. Mm -hmm. When God gives you a future, a destiny, yes. a purpose, yes. Yes. it ain't based on your on your righteousness. That's right. On what you have done for him. That's right. It ain't by your works, yes. whether you talk good or whether you talk ugly. ugly. Yes. Because God, hallelujah, yes. can use you for his own purpose yes. and turn you around. Woo, hallelujah. If you don't believe me, yes, Lord. the apostle Paul is a good example. The Apostle Paul was a killer of the church. Mm -hmm. He was killing folks, dragging yeah. folks off yeah. that believed in Jesus, yeah. putting them in jail, having some stoned to death and killed, and he was bearing witness to it, but God turned him around. Right. When God called him, hallelujah, Paul wasn't doing right. That's right. He was doing wrong. Yeah. It wasn't according to his works that God called him. If because God said, I'm going to turn this boy's life around. That's right. Amen. And I'm going to find some purpose for him. Yes. And he's going to yes. walk in it. Yes. And he became, and he wrote three quarters of the New Testament. Yes, that's right. Amen. Amen. He wrote three fourths of the New Testament, Amen. the Apostle Paul. Amen. But it wasn't by his works. That's right. So whenever you think God called, he's going, I, he can't use that old boy, that old boy there. He ain't worth a nickel. Listen, God don't throw you away. That's right. You can be doing wrong. You can be walking in the wrong place. Yes. But God can show up. Yes. Hallelujah. And touch you. Yes. And turn your life around. Oh, and give you a purpose. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Listen, some of the best preachers we got today came out of the prison. That's right. Yes. Amen. Amen. I do prison ministry for over 30 years. Some of the greatest preachers we have ever had and a life that were turned around that finally found their purpose yes. came out of the prison house. That's yes. right, amen. The world had thrown them away. Yes. And they had messed up. But God didn't throw them away. That's right, amen. God said, I'm going to give you a purpose. Yes. You might you have messed up the plan that you were born for. Yeah. But God said, I ain't gonna give up on this plan. That's I'm right. gonna turn your life around. Yeah. And they turn around right in prison, hallelujah, but yeah. he can still turn your life around. That's right, amen. Amen, church. Amen. That's good news. Amen. It ain't by works. Even the Bible says you don't get saved by works, but you get saved by grace amen. through faith. It ain't by works. But a lot of us think, well, I ain't good enough to do that. I ain't good enough to preach. I ain't good enough to testify to somebody at Walmart. Look what I did. Look what I did. It ain't by your work. That's right. Mm. It's by the goodness of God. Don't think God can you it can't use you just because of what you have become. That's right. Amen. He can make us something new out of you. Ooh, hallelujah. Yes. That's why you can't ever give up on people. That's right. You Preaching can't ever throw people Amen. away. That's right. Amen. Amen. You can't prejudge people and say, well, they ain't pretty right. enough to preach the gospel on TV. Forget all that. You ain't got to be pretty. That's you just right. got to be anointed. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 So look at Jeremiah 29, 11. <clears throat> Born for a purpose. I told a boy that came in here one time, he was, he was addicted to opioids, pills, strung out. Born in a good family, been to church for many years as a little boy with his family. Daddy said, can you meet with my son? He's, he's struggling. Won't stay in bed all day. Can't get him up. Can't get him going. Can't get him to work. He's old enough to be working. He's a man now. He stays in his bedroom, locked up, sleeping. Brought him in, and when I found out what was going on, mm -hmm. I said, young man, one thing you need is some purpose. That's right. Amen. You need some purpose to get up in the morning. Amen. 
Amen. You need some purpose to get up and go do what? You know, get life going in the right direction. You can't get nothing going in the right direction sleeping in the bed all day. That's right. I said, you're going nowhere. Your life is, is, is you probably wake up saying, you know, feeling hopeless. Mm -hmm. Feeling a hole in the soul. Mm -hmm. Ain't got nowhere to go. Purpose means you have been created. Uh, let me look at this. <laughs> I don't want to mess this up. Purpose, the reason for which something is made. See, that's right. Think about that. The definition of purpose, the reason for, su for, for which something is made. Everything that's ever been invented was made for a purpose. That's right, amen. amen. Every car that was invented was meant to be dro drove. Every house that was built that was built never was built to remain empty. It was rem it was built to be lived in, to be furnished. Hallelujah, to have a life in. Every house has a purpose. Every car has a purpose. Every invention has a purpose. And you were born for a purpose. That's right. Can amen. I have an amen? Amen. amen? amen. It might take you a little while to find this purpose. That's right. But if you ever find it, praise God, you got it going in the right Ooh, direction. Hallelujah. Yes. Instead of just going around in circles. That's right. Me and Bart went around in the circle for a long time. <laughs> amen. You know that boy finally found his purpose? Praise God. Finally God. found it perfect. When he found it perfect, look, every Sunday he's right here. That's right. Every Wednesday he's right here. And if he can't be here, guess what he does? He calls his pastor and says, I ain't going to be here to make it tonight. I just want you to know where I'm at. Back in the old days, he was wandering aimlessly. He didn't, he didn't call mama. He didn't call daddy. He didn't call nobody to tell him where he was at. But they knew where he was at. <laughs> Doing something wrong. <laughs> That's where he was at. He was up to no good. But he had finally found Jesus. Right. And he finally God. found the cross. And he's, hallelujah. And he's always now saying, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. <laughs> and he knows he is. Y'all bet you won't change his mind on Jesus ain't coming. He's coming. So, Jeremiah 29 11 says this. Look at verse 10. For thus says the Lord. After 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you yes. and perform my good word towards you and cause you to return to this place. Verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace yes. Yes. and yes. not of evil. That's right. To give you a future Ooh, hallelujah. and a hope. Yes, Jesus. See, the children of Israel had messed up bad. Yeah. Mm. Their sins had brought them into captivity. Yeah. Babylon had come in and took the Jewish people out of their homeland back to Babylon. But God gave them a word. Yeah. He said, you're going to stay in Babylon for 70 years in the captivity. All right. But after 70 years is complete. He said, I'm going to perform my good word to you. Yeah. And he said, I want you to know, Israel, though you messed up, you have paid for it in these 70 years of captivity. But I want you to know, I'm fixing to bring you back home. Uh -huh. I'm fixing to bring you back home, and I want you to know how I'm thinking about you. Yeah. And the Lord said, I'm thinking about you, Israel. And he said, I'm thinking peaceful thoughts towards you. Oh, yeah. Thoughts of peace and not evil. That's right. To do you good and not harm. That's right. And to give you a future and a hope. Yes, That's the way the Lord is thinking about you. That's right. Amen. Don't ever let the devil change your mind That's and think right. the Lord don't want to do you good. Ooh, because the Lord wants to give you a future. Sure. Yes. He don't want to steal your future. He wants to give you a future yes. and he wants to give you hope and expectation Hallelujah. To live a good life every day. Ooh, hallelujah. Yeah. God is on your side, not against yes, you. Yes, hallelujah. Amen. A lot of people have a mixed up mind about how the Lord is thinking about them. Yes. A lot of people think God is, 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 is out to get them. Mm -hmm. And he, he and, and God walks around heaven with a Louisville slugger. Yes. And he's just waiting on you to mess up. And when you mess up, well, the... They think God's going to hit them in the head with Louisville Slugger. They think bad thoughts about God. 
But God ain't thinking bad about you. When you own the Lord's mind, he's thinking peace to you. Shalom to you. Peace to you. Not evil. He ain't thinking bad. And he wants to give you something. What's he want to give you? A future. A life worth living. He wants to give you a life full of hope. Hallelujah. That's what God wants to give you. But you got to want that. Amen. You got to go after that. Because yeah. later down there in verse 13, yes. the Lord said, If you'll seek me, yes. you'll find, find me, me. That's right. when you search for me with all your heart. Yes. If you'll come looking for me oh, with everything you got within you, yes. hallelujah. He said, oh, You'll find me. Yes. The Lord said, I ain't hiding from That's you. Right. I just want you to search searching for me. Yes. Be hungry yes. for me. Yes. Be thirsty yes. for me. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And if you want to find me, yes. the Lord said, Praise the Hallelujah. Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. God. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to give you a destiny this morning. Yes. A future this morning. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We might be old, Miss Louise, but we still got a future. That's right. Hallelujah. Our future ain't passed me by. I can still win people to the Lord. That's right. She found her purpose. Yes. She's a soul winner. That's right. I'm so proud of her. Yes. I might take her to Cambodia with me for a while. Woo! Buy her first class seat. <laughs> And I'll sit in the economy. Aww. Hey, now, let's think about this. Everybody in the Bible was born for a purpose. Yes, man. I'm going to come down the list for a little bit, and we're going to go back in time. In the book of Genesis, there was a man named Noah. Yes. Y'all ever heard of Noah? Yes. Amen. Noah was born for a purpose. Amen. The Bible said when Noah was 500 years old, the Lord came to him. Yes. And he had found favor in the sight of the Lord. And then he was a righteous man. And God came to him and said, I need you to build me an ark. Yes, he did. Yeah. Because judgment is coming on this generation. Mm -hmm. There ain't nothing Noah you can do to stop the judgment. But I've called you. You have a purpose to build an ark. To save your family. To save this world and to save the animal kingdom. So Noah started building an ark. Noah had a purpose, and that purpose was to build the ark to preserve people from the coming judgment the flood that flooded the yes. world back then. Yes. Yes. Noah was born for a purpose. Yes. And he found that purpose. Yes. And hallelujah, he built that ark. And that when Noah turned 600 years old, the Bible said the Lord told Noah to go into that ark. And the Lord closed the door behind him. Mm -hmm. yes, and the flooding started. Yeah. But it took him 100 years to build that ark. Now I'm telling y'all, he didn't have no, no sawmill. He didn't have no loads to go to. He didn't have no Home Depot to go and pick out some pallets of wood. He didn't have no steel chainsaw. He didn't have none of the equipment that we got today. He had to do it the hard way. A hundred years to build this massive ark. Hallelujah. That had two of every kind of animal on it. Yes. And eight people went into that ark. Noah's family. Noah, his wife, his three sons, and they, they each had a wife. A total of eight went into that ark. God closed the door. Hallelujah. And the floodwaters came. But Noah preached for a hundred years. Yes, he did. To this lost and dying generation oh, yeah. of people. Oh, yeah. That their hearts were full of evil. Amen. And Noah went and told them every day there's a flood coming. Yes, there's did. a flood coming. Judgment's coming upon your life because of the yes. way you have lived before Almighty God. And they didn't want to hear it. They turned their ears there toward the gospel of Noah. Hallelujah. But Noah stayed faithful. He had a purpose. He had a calling. He had the will of God. He finished it. He went in the ark. And the ark represents Jesus today. If you're in the ark, you're safe. If you're in the ark, you're, you're, you're born again. Amen. 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 You're saved from destruction if you're in the ark. Yes. And Jesus is our ark. Yes. That's right. Amen. 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 Noah did what he was called to do. He had a purpose. 
He woke up, up, up every morning. I got an art to build. God called me to son. I got to stay faithful. I got to stay true to what he's called me to do. He found his purpose and he did what God called him to do. Next, and we move on up. Abraham born for a purpose. Yes, amen. Abraham born for a purpose. What was his purpose? To, to out of his loins would become a nation of people called the Jewish race that God had, had chosen for himself. God came to Abram and said, I'm going to, your, your descendants shall be as numerous as the stars in the heavens and the sand on the seashore. Abraham was born for a purpose. Out of his loins would come a nation. Yes. Then we got Moses. Yeah. Moving on up the road to Moses, yeah. Moses was born for a purpose. Yeah. Amen. The devil tried to destroy him because he had a purpose. That's right. The devil tried to destroy him. His mama had to put him in a basket and float him down the river. Yes, because did. the devil was coming to kill all the babies. Yes. But yes. God had a purpose yes. and Hallelujah. plan for that little boy, and the devil wasn't going to get it. That's right. Amen. So Moses became a deliverer. For the children of yeah, Israel. Yeah. And brought them out of Egypt. Yeah. And then we're going to move on up. To Joshua. Mm -hmm. After Moses. Came another leader. Yeah. Here come a young man. That loved God as much as Moses did. Yeah. Hallelujah was anointed. Yeah. And God called Joshua. To take those people. Out of the wilderness. Which Moses wasn't, couldn't do. And didn't do. He got, he got tired. He got wore out yes. by the people. Yeah. The people. Mm -hmm. It wasn't God wore him out. It wasn't God was through with him. It was them three million Jewish folks that were murmuring and murmuring. complaining yeah. and always saying, are you sure you heard from God? Yeah. Are you sure you want, you want us to eat this manna every day? Do you sure you want us to drink water from this rock? Hallelujah, we thirsty, we hungry, we cold. And all that, and they murmured and complained against the man of God. Yes. And finally, Moses got so frustrated with the people, when God told him to speak to the rock, he didn't speak to the rock. He took his staff, and he hit the rock, and the water came out, but he disobeyed God. And God said, because you disobeyed me, you can't take him into in the Canaan land. Right. But he rose up another man. That's right. Joshua. Here Hallelujah. comes Joshua. Hallelujah. Here comes Joshua. And Joshua took him across the river yes. in the Canaan land yes. to defeat Jericho and all the enemies. Yes. And that land became there. But Joshua had a purpose. That's right. Amen. Amen. Everybody born for a purpose. That's right. Every young man sitting in here, every young lady in here, every man sitting in here, born for a purpose. Oh, you were not put here, here, just to, just to make 40 hours a week right. and to go home and lay down. Yes. You were born, hallelujah, for God to anoint you, hallelujah. to bless you, and to use you Woo! for his kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Born for a purpose. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. Think about this. Esther. Yes. Esther. Any of y'all ever heard of Esther? Yes. There's a book in the Bible called Esther. Yes, there is. Esther 4, chapter 4, verse 14. Mordecai mm -hmm. said to Esther, mm -hmm. Esther, if you keep silent at this time, you've got to speak to the king. And if you keep silent, you're going to perish. Your family going to perish. That's right. But God said, yes. if you keep silent, you're going to perish. Your family going to perish. But I'll raise somebody else up to do what I called you to do. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. And Mordecai said to her, Esther, mm -hmm. you have been born into the kingdom. For such a time as this. You've been brought into the kingdom for such a time as this. You ain't even supposed to be here. That's right. But God put you here. That's right, amen. And he has made you queen. Yes. To the king. You've been brought and put in this position for such a time as this. Yes. God has put you here after. That's right. And God has a message. You've got to speak to, to the king because if you don't, your whole Jewish nation it could possibly be wiped out completely. Mm. It was the devil trying to wipe out the whole Jewish race. 
And he was using a man by the name of Amon yeah. to get it done. Mm -hmm. But God said, Esther's got a purpose. That's right. What's Esther's purpose? She's going to go present herself to the king. Yeah. She's going to go and God's going to give her wisdom and give her the words and the yeah. anointing. She's going to speak to the king and she's going to save her whole nation. Yeah. Yeah. Esther was born for a purpose to save the whole Jewish nation. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise My God. goodness, that's a good story to yeah. read. Yeah. But she was born for a purpose. Yeah. And then I got to think about Peter. Y'all yeah. ever heard of crazy Peter? Yes. Peter, the water walker. The water walker. Peter was raised by his natural daddy to fish. All he knew how to do was fish. He knew how to fish now. His daddy brought him up. You're going to take over the business one day, son. I'm a fisherman. My daddy was a fisherman. Your grandfather was a fisherman. And they all taught me how to fish. Now I'm teaching you how to fish, Peter. Peter, you are a fisherman. You live to fish and fish to live. Yeah, you hear me? Yeah. Then Jesus come along one day. That's right. And he comes and he said, Peter, yes. come follow me. Yes, he did. And he did. He got out of the boat and he came and followed Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus said, if you'll come follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. Amen. 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 Listen, Peter wasn't born just to throw a hook and bait a hook and throw a net. He was born for a purpose, a God divine purpose, yes. was to throw a net out and bring in a whole bunch of men, yes. a whole bunch of souls, That's bringing right. them into the kingdom of God. Yes. He was to be a soul winner. Yes. He was born to be anointed. He was born to cast out devils. Yes. He was born to heal the sick. He was born to be a future apostle. Yes. That's what his divine purpose was. Yes. His daddy brought him up to be a fisherman. Mm -hmm. But Jesus looked in him deeper than what his daddy had brought him up to be. He said, you're going to be a rock. Mm -hmm. yes. You're going to be an apostle. Mm -hmm. You're going to be my disciple. Yes. And you're going to be a soul winner. Yes. And you're going to be a good one. Yes. Listen, Peter was... More, were born not just to fish on the water. Yeah. He was born to walk on the water. That's right. Amen. Y'all hear me? Yes. That's good to me. I don't know about y'all. Yes, but I like walking on the water. Yes. I like folks that'll get out of the boat yes. and believe God to do some That's supernatural right. things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Born for a purpose. Yes. You know, in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Ghost came like a mighty rushing wind, and the cloven tongues of fire came in, and the people were, were speaking in other tongues. Yes. I'm telling you, that's the day the church was born. Right. And the church was born for a purpose. That's right. Amen. 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 The church was born for a purpose. The Holy Ghost didn't fall on them in there just to stay in that upper room and, and just continue to have glorious meetings. No, they were filled with the Spirit, and they were to go out into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Right. They were born for a purpose. Yes. The devil can't stop the church. That's right. We were born for a purpose. Yes. The Holy Ghost lives in us. Yes. We've been anointed by God. Hallelujah. The mighty rushing winds have yes. moved on us. And the gates of hell Hallelujah. shall not prevail against the church yes. of the living God. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. 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 You were born for a purpose. Yes, Lord. And I'm going to tell you something. Y'all wasn't born just to sit on no pew. That's right. Y'all were born, hallelujah, to come into the church and get filled with the Spirit yes. and be taught the Word of God and right. go back into that world and go back to your workplaces and go wherever God puts you, yes. hallelujah, yes. to tell somebody yes. how good Jesus yes. is. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. To tell them how to, yes. the way of salvation, yes. how to be saved, how to be washed in the blood. Yes. Why they need to be washed in the blood? Y'all ain't, I ain't never going to be happy with, with pew sitters. That's right. <laughs> Amen. Jesus ain't never happy with pew sitters. That's right. Sing three songs and go home. <laughs> Wait till next week. No, we got to win some souls. That's right. Amen. We got to make a difference in this yes. dark right. world that we live in. Yes. yes. We are the light of the world. We got to go light somebody up. That's right. Amen, Amen. brother Jerry. Amen. I'm so happy, Jerry. You're going to start winning souls, man. You're going to yes. start winning souls. You're going to start winning souls, man. I'm telling yes. you, you're going to start bringing them folks in your family, yes. outside your family, Hallelujah. people you around. You're going to get someone on fire with God, Jerry. You're going to be saying, man, I wasted a lot of my life. Mm -hmm. 
But I, I am coming to the kingdom for such a time as this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Woo. Praise the Lord yes. Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of the Most High God. Yes. Yes. Well, we thank you, Father. If you look into the Bible, you're going to find people at a purpose. Yes. A divine purpose. Yes, amen. Yes. Amen. yes. Listen, I used to be a wanderer. Yeah. I didn't have no purpose. The only purpose I had was to get up and drink, do drugs, go to work, get up next morning, do the same cycle. Yeah. Next morning, same cycle. Mm -hmm. One morning I woke up on the edge of the bed, I was so empty. After doing drugs all night long, I thought about taking my life. And I'm glad I didn't. But I didn't have no purpose. I had no reason to live. But on February the 8th, 1992, I was 27 years old. I gave my life to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And once I got to the cross, and I began to dive into the Word of God. And I wanted to do something for Jesus. I didn't know what, but I wanted to do something besides just go to church and sing, sing, sing three songs. That's right. I said, I ain't going to make it like this, guys. Nope. Right. I mean, right. I've always been, if I'm going to be on the team, <laughs> yes. I'm going to be on the field. That's right. right. I don't ride no pine. Nope. <laughs> if I got to beat up somebody... To, to win that position, I'm all in it now. That's right. There's going to be a war going on. Yes. But I'm going to be on that field. Mm -hmm. I'm a player. Yes. I'm going to bang heads. Mm -hmm. I'm going to win. Yes. I'm a winner. I got Jesus put that in me. Yes. Yes. I can't step onto a ball field and just calmly do nothing. Mm -hmm. Now, when I get on the field, it's all business. Yes. I'm going to give it everything I got. That's right. But anyhow, after I found Jesus, I began to fast and pray. Lord, what you have? What is my purpose? What have you called me to do? Yes. And as I fasted and prayed, man, I tell you, I didn't ask God for what he gave me. All I did was seek his heart. Yes. All I began to do was seek his face. Yes. And doors began to open. Yes. Doors began to go open. I call them little bitty small doors. Yes. But the Bible said, don't despise Small beginnings. That's right. Amen. And I made a, I said something to the Lord one night after I got saved. I said, Lord, I may fall, I may stumble. Mm -hmm. I said, but I ain't never going back. That's right. I ain't going to quit. I'm going to brush myself off yes. and I'm going to run back to yes. you. Yes. And I said, Lord, if you'll open a door for me, I promise you, Lord, I may not know what to say mm -hmm. or what to do, but I'm going through the door. That's right. And I'm going to depend on you once I get through the door to do the doing and the speaking. Yes, amen. yes, amen. And the Lord, he, he heard that. Mm. And he began to crack open some doors for me. Yes. The first door he ever opened for me. I wasn't a pastor. I was just a pew sitter. Going to church, search, searching God's heart. He opened a door for me to go to the nursing home <laughs> to preach. Amen. Amen. Somebody at my church said, we're going to the nursing home. Would you like to go, Stacy? We'd like for you to speak to the people. I said, there's a door. Yes. Once I, you, and a door opens, y'all, don't start this religious stuff. That's right. I got to pray about it for a couple of weeks. No. Pray for what? <laughs> what do you got to pray about? The Bible said, go and preach the gospel with all the world. That's right. Amen. What do you got to pray about? The door's open. Go preach. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got to go pray about it. <laughs> Go sit on the pine some more. You ain't ready. <laughs> Be ready. I was saying, get ready, stay ready. Yes. Preach the word in season and out of season. Be yes. ready. Yes. Hallelujah. So, went to the nursing home. I spoke David versus Goliath. <laughs> I said, they like, they like that one. I preached that. After that, the jail ministry. Yes. People said, would you like to go to jail ministry with a station? Yeah. There was a door. I said. Yeah, I'll go with y'all. What time? 8 o'clock Sunday morning. I'll be there. I went in. These three or four men, they spoke, and they said, Stacy, would you like to say something? There was 10 men in that jail that day. Mm -hmm. 
They said, Stacy, would you like to say something? Remember what I told the Lord? If you open the door, I got to say something. I didn't know what I was going to say. Yeah. First time in the jail ministry. Mm -hmm. I stepped up there, man. I tried to tell him about Jesus. I gave an altar call. Yeah. All ten got saved up there. Ooh, hallelujah. All ten. Praise the Lord. After they all got saved, the Lord spoke to me. He said, Stacy, this is what I called you to do. Yes. This is part of your purpose. Yes. This is part of your calling. So I've been going to the jail over 30 years. Yes. Because the Lord spoke to me. After them 10 got saved, he said, son, you got 100% this morning. Yes. But it wasn't me. It was Jesus. Yes, yes. That's right. But Jesus needs us yes, that's to right. step in to what he called us to do. Yes. Listen, God didn't just say, like I dream a genie, boom, there's an ark. That's right. No, he needed Noah to build that ark. Yes, that's right. God ain't no I dream a genie deal. That's right. He need he works through people. What I'm trying to say. Yes, amen. Some people say, "Well, God don't need me." That, that, that ain't biblical. That's right. That ain't biblical. Amen. If God didn't need you to preach the gospel to all the world, why would He tell you to go and preach the gospel to all the world? All right. Exactly. He said, "Well, the birds are going to do it. The buzzards going to do it. The eagles going to do it." No, they ain't. Angels ain't even going to do it. That's he right. called us, yes. the human race, yes. to preach the gospel yes. to all the world. That's right, amen. So I went to, the, went to the old folks' home, then I went to the jail, and then one day, after being faithful, I went to the trailer parks, I went to the drug neighborhoods, mm -hmm. I handed out Bibles, I taught, I wasn't no minister, I was just a... Yes. And then the Lord said to my pastor, I call Stacy the pastor. Yes. And the, our, our pastor put me in position and anointed me. I ain't never been to Bible school. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. Ain't got no, ain't got no diploma. All I got is. Lord Jesus. I got Jesus. I got the calling. Yes. I got the purpose. Yes. And I started pastoring. After I started pastoring, I didn't ask to go to the mission field. I got a phone call. Would you like to go to the mission field? Door open. I went through that door. That's right. I went to Guyana, South America, mm -hmm. into the jungles of Guyana, South America, and started preaching the gospel to the Amerindians down in the jungles. Yes. Down there where Jim Jones took all them people, mm -hmm. and they drank Kool-Aid and died. Oh. I was way down there in the jungle mm -hmm. preaching the gospel. And from that, I went to Thailand. I've been to Cambodia. I've been to Kenya. Been to Uganda. Been to Myanmar. Been to the Navajo Nation. Been all over the place. Yes. And I didn't ask for none of it. I just found my purpose yes. Amen. when I found Amen. the Lord. That's right. And I started seeking Him with all my heart. Yes, Lord. He gave me a life worth living. That's right. You here this morning? There's more to do. Yes, it is. Jesus is going to wrap this thing up before long. Yes. 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 I call this the end time harvest. Yes. That means the end is coming and the last saving of the souls. It's coming into the barn now. Yes, yes. yes it right. is. And at some point, God's going to say, that's it, finished. Yes. That's the end time harvest. we got to get busy doing what God's yeah. called us to do while we still got time. That's right. Amen. Find your purpose. Yes. If it's teaching children in the children's church, get back there. That's right. If it's to win put folks at Walmart, start a prayer ministry at Walmart, and just walk around the store all day long looking for folks to pray for. Them. That's right. There's Don't plenty. think they ain't some up there to pray for. Them. Oh, there's yeah. plenty. Oh man, you can meet everybody in the world at Walmart. That's right. <laughs> but you ain't never too old, not too young. That's right. Josiah was born for a purpose. Yes. At eight years old, he became the king yes. of Israel. That's yeah. right. At eight years old. Wow. God is so amazing. Yes, he is. Y'all continue. Search the heart of God for your purpose. Don't be a wanderer. That's right. Don't be a child of God that's saved, but still don't know your purpose. Find your purpose. Yes. And start being used by the Lord. Stand with me this morning. Hallelujah. If you're looking today by media, it was our honor to come into your home. However you're viewing this, we want you to know we love you. I hope that this message was a blessing to you. I pray that if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, yes. that you will give your life to Jesus. Yes. How do you do that? The Bible says you've got to believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead. And 
if you'll believe this in your heart and confess Jesus with your mouth, you shall be saved. And whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It don't matter if you're Buddhist, if you're Muslim, That's right. it don't matter if you're Hindu, it don't matter what, uh, where you where you are or what you are. That's right. Call upon Jesus. Yes. Surrender your life to Him. He'll wash you in His blood. He'll wash away your sin. Yeah. He'll give you a purpose worth living. If you're looking out here today and you don't have no purpose and you're a wanderer, drug addict, yeah. maybe suicidal, mm -hmm. I'm speaking life to you. That's right. I'm telling you there's a way to turn and that turn is to Jesus. If you'll turn and believe in Him, Jesus will show up. And he'll touch you. And you'll know he's alive. Because he is alive. He ain't no dead God. Hallelujah. So give your life to Jesus. Send us some comments. Let us know that you enjoyed the service. And God bless you. And we'll tune in next week. Amen. Amen.